Chomp. Hi everybody and welcome back to You Are Supreme Toys. Today we've kind of got a backlog review here. We're going to be looking at NECA Toys Man Ray from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventure Series in his Archie Comics style. I have hesitated on getting this guy for a little while. He's been out for, I don't know, a few months now. But I finally decided to just throw him in the cart with some other things the other day and pick him up because he does look fantastic. Now Man Ray is one of those kind of confusing characters. Most people probably aren't familiar with Man Ray, but they might be familiar with Ray Filet, the action figure. So we'll get into that later. But right now, we're going to look at this guy in the package. He looks amazing in the package. This guy really has that NECA flair. The colors, the paint apps, the sculpt, <laughs> it just really, really looks good. The packaging is fantastic. We got this nice little Archie style artwork depiction of Man Ray on the front and sides of the box. He looks great. We have the back right here which depicts Man Ray in different poses with different accessories as well as more to come with Slash, Jaguar, and Dreadmon from the Archie comics. I've mentioned before, but I really appreciate that NECA always credits the people who have worked on their figures. Now this packaging looks great. This is a fun package. I like the throwback style to the old Archie comics in the design of this packaging. I'm particularly fond of the little issue number box right here at the top. As you can see, it says NECA Adventure Series issue number two and since NECA doesn't have the rights to Archie they just put their name in it. As you can see here in this issue of the Mighty Mute Animals we have Archie Adventure Series in the top corner. As beautiful as this box looks we're not here for the package so let's go ahead and pop this guy out. All right, that was a chore, getting him out of that box. That was pretty difficult. So here we have Man Ray. He looks pretty good. I love the little splash details and the pin marks that they put over the sculpt. It really helps the sculpt pop. If they didn't have these little detail lines, it would really be bland and flat, which, which really helps give it more of a comic book look. And that's what these guys are supposed to is a comic book interpretation of these characters. Now, he is a bit top-heavy because this ray fin on the back is very thick and heavy, pliable rubber. I think it's permanently attached. I think it's glued into place. It is pegged into the back, and it doesn't appear to want to come out. Uh, I have no reason to take it off, though, so I'm not going to try. His tail is a separate piece, and it looks okay. Nice little pin marks and coloring on it. And it just pegs into this little ball joint, which is a double jointed ball joint. So it should have plenty of motion once we get it in. Oop, that peg wants to wobble around, so. Ah. Yeah. Ah, it's a bit wonky. You might want to heat yours up to get it on, but it's not too much of a problem. I believe this tail has a bendy wire in it. As you can see, these little holes in the bottom of the plastic which usually indicates a bendy wire of some kind, but I'm not really interested in bending the tail. I think the little articulation points are suitable. So I'm not gonna bother with that. He's still very top heavy though, so perhaps you'll have to pose the tail in a certain way to help him balance. Now these paint apps are fantastic. I love the paint on the eyes and the teeth and his tongue is painted in his mouth. I don't know if you can see that. It's painted red. I love the little scales. These scales are actually sculpted. They're raised, sort of, and then they're just pinstriped. They do the same thing with his musculature on his chest and abs and his forearms and legs. He looks really good. He looks... I don't know how NECA is able to do it. They just seem to find a balance between the paint apps of the figures that they're doing to help depict 
whatever medium the figures are supposed to be from. For instance, he looks like he comes out of a comic book. If you bought one of the animated figures, he would look like he was out of the cartoon. If you bought one of the movie figures, it looks just like the movie. It's just ridiculous the amount of detail they can get in these guys for the medium that they are depicting. So let's take a look at his articulation. He has head articulation. He can move his head a little bit. It's not going to be much because, you know, he is just a big neck man. His neck is, <laughs> his head and neck are the same thing. But the fact that you can get any articulation out of that is great. I love this head sculpt. It's emoted very well with that yelling grin, which depicts that crazy Archie style comic art that they used for these guys. His shoulders are articulated. They only go up about that high on the hinge. They swivel. There's a bicep twist and a bicep hinge, which is ratcheted very well and it's very tight, as well as a twist and hinge with the fists. Ugh, and those fists are kind of stuck. You might want to heat these guys up a little bit. He is. That fist is stuck. Uh, I'm going to get it to break. Literally or figuratively. Uh. Alright, I got it loose. It's pretty tight. Those hands are pretty tight, so you definitely want to heat those up if you have to. Of course, this is mirrored over to the other side. That pinched my finger. And those hands are really stuck. They twist fine, but that hinge, the hinge on those fist is insane. Ugh. It's hard to do this in front of the camera. <laughs> All right, got that. Of course, he has this little chest cut here, which gives him some rotation and a bobble. So he's got a good range of motion in his chest. Now that's going to detract from the symmetry of the chest if you move it in a certain way, but you get it lined up, it doesn't look too bad. It's got pretty good back motion. I never understood that. These, these articulation points on the chest and abs are always better going back than they are forward. It doesn't seem to matter if it's McFarlane Toys, Hasbro, or... NECA, it just seems like they just can't get it to go forward as much as it should. And it's just so much back rotation. I mean, it's going to hit that fin. But he can get a lot of dynamic poses out of it. Now, his hips are a little loose. Um, I don't know. I'm not really happy about that. Especially with him being top-heavy. But he does hide his hip joints very well. They did that so good. This lower body piece is a softer rubber sock that sort of slides over the joints for the hips so the motion isn't going to be hindered at all but those hips are kind of loose and they are on a ball with a twist so you can twist them and hinge them they work very well i just wish they weren't so loose this one just popped out of socket so careful of that at least it easily pops in and out and of course he has a double jointed knee, which is kind of tight. Sometimes I don't think the double jointed knees are necessary. And there is some yellow paint rub on the inside of that knee that doesn't look very good. But it is what it is, and that top knee is actually stuck. And this mirrors over to the other side. That knee. Ugh. It is hard to articulate his legs because of this back fin. Very difficult. Like the bottom, the bottom knee is stuck here, and the top knee is stuck here, and I really can't finagle it loose with, with this thing in the way. Now it looks like he has a boot cut, but I can't seem to get it to move. In fact, I'm looking at it, and he does not have a boot cut. It is just, it looks like it, but it's just pinstriping around the sculpt so the boots are painted but he does have the hinged and rocker ankle feet now that paint on the inside of that joint is kind of sloppy it looks pretty bad 
but the feet are tight and that actually helps with his, his standing his feet are actually really tight move his feet and he'll stand pretty good he looks great now let's take a look at his accessories first he comes with an extra head I love this smug little smirk look right here uh, I could really go either way with whichever head I would display him with it's kind of hard to pick <laughs> they both look really good I guess it would depend on how you're posing him I'll probably keep him with the yelling head but I do want to see how easy it is to swap the heads first head comes off good uh, my second head is a little uh, a little tough to get on but you can get it on I'm not gonna use it though so gosh the head is tight uh, yeah there we go that's better and Man Ray comes with six interchangeable hands he has these two open, waving looking palms, like he's swimming or something. He has these two grasping hands. Then he has two sort of holding hands. This is a trigger finger hand. Um, I guess he could hold something with this, but he, he doesn't really have anything. Of course, he comes with a turtle. I don't know the significance of this sea turtle. Perhaps you do. I don't remember him from anything specifically, but it is a cool little like companion accessory. He comes with his harpoon gun. This is a firmer plastic, so be cautious of that when messing with it. It's not terribly flimsy, but it is firm and it is possible to break the harpoon off the end of this thing. It is actually painted pretty decently. It's a pretty basic design with some pinstriping and some gray paint, and I think that's all it needs. Going back to the turtle, I think the turtle looks wonderful. This turtle sculpted very well. In fact, I would say you could use this turtle with about anything. The only thing about this turtle that screams Archie is that face sculpt. That is definitely an Archie comic style face sculpt right there. The paint is very good on him. This is a very great looking sea turtle toy. The most interesting part of this is he has a companion figure, which is rivaling fish stick from the Vintage Playmates toy. If you don't know what this is, this is a glub lub. And I believe this is supposed to be Bubla the Glublub, which was Rayman's buddy for the whole part of one issue of the comics, which he was shot to death. <laughs> uh, is this a necessary piece? Absolutely not. But this is one tricky way to get an Archie figure into the line. Like They snuck something that most collectors probably wouldn't care to have. And very few collectors would be thrilled to have. Here you are. You have a Glublub. Is it Bubla? Is it another Glublub? I don't know. He's got lobster arms and he looks like a sea monkey. The paint and sculpt on him is pretty decent. But, you know, I just... He stands very well. I, I don't really care about him. But, at the same time, I'm glad he's here. He adds value to the package. Now, as far as value is concerned... This guy ranges from $35 to $42, depending on the retailer you get him from. I purchased mine from Target, so I believe he was $37.99. If you want to get him from Big Bad Toy Store, he's like $42. What's the deal with Man Ray? Isn't he supposed to be Ray Filet? Yes, he is. So I have a small stack of Archie comics here that I've had since I was a kid, and we're going to go through them. First, we have this... Volume 1 Collected Series from the Archie Comics. I've had this for a very long time. I don't even remember how old I was when I got this. Um, this is a collection of, I think, three issues of the comics. Now, here's something of interest. If you look down here in the copyrights, you'll see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, including Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, Raphael, Splinter, April O'Neil, Leatherhead, Ray Filet... Ace Duck, Shredder, Krang, Bebop, Rocksteady, and Foot Soldier are registered trademarks of Mirage Studios. Blah, 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 blah. So, why is that interesting? <laughs> okay. They trademarked him as Ray Filet in the comics. However, in the comics, Ray Filet is Man Ray. And this is his first appearance in the Archie comics. And he refers to himself as Man Ray. So this is the first 
full image of Man Ray going up against Shredder. He looks fantastic. I love this piece of art. This is an amazing drawing. I love it. So we bring Man Ray in here. You can definitely see that NECA puts their own flair on things, but they definitely obviously pulled from the, the Archie comics style. Is it one for one? Absolutely not. The colors are off. And it's hard to tell at what point NECA draws their inspiration for their Archie figures because there are so many different artists that wind up touching these characters. How do you pinpoint which version of the characters to use as your reference material? For instance, here's the cover of Mighty Mute Animals number one. And you can see on the front, Dreadmon, Jaguar, Mondo Gecko, Leatherhead, and Ray Filet, and Wingnut with screw loose on his back and you will notice that Ray Filet is modeled after the Playmates action figure. So is Leatherhead and Mondo Gecko. But it's interesting that this is the art that the artist used for the cover. These figure inspired versions of the characters. Whereas if you look right here in the top, Man Ray is obviously Archie styled. Looks just like the figure and I'm pretty sure there's a character Bible that NECA has drawn from. So if we look in this issue, we can find a nice little representation of Man Ray right here in the green and yellow. And he looks pretty spot on with the figure. This is probably close to the style that NECA drew their inspiration from. There are definitely some differences. Now Man Ray lasted a few years and then this issue came out and <laughs> for some reason I don't know really if they redacted this later or not because uh, it's been so long since I've read any of this the Mighty Mute Animals which was the team of Dreadmon, Jaguar, Mondo Gecko, Man Ray, Wingnut and Leatherhead were blasted to death by these gun-toting thugs and that was the end of our heroes. Here we have another cover. This is a very good cover. You can obviously see that the artist drew inspiration from the action figure as opposed to the original version. Of course, if you go into the comic and look at him, Man Ray is definitely the proper style with the green and yellow chest. This issue answers all your questions, though. If you go back to the bullpen in the back April R. Hunt of West Palm Beach Florida asks to whom it may concern I have just read the Mighty Mutanimals winter special I would be thrilled to see this as a regular series I would also enjoy it if you could provide the readers with some information on how each mutanimal was mutated I also have a couple questions concerning Man Ray isn't he the same as Ray Filet, the action figure made by Playmates? And if so, why not use just one name? Also, are you thinking of doing a cartoon series based on the comic books? Thank you, April R. Hunt. Our fellows at Mirage and Archie answered this question as best they could. The origins to the various mutanimals will be covered throughout the course of the series. Last issue featured the birth of Jaguar and this one features the story of Wingnut and Screwloose. Yes, Man Ray and Ray Filet are indeed the same character. He was named Man Ray back when he first appeared in TMNT Adventures number 5. It wasn't until about a year or so later that Playmates decided to make an action figure of him, but for some legal reason had to change his name. Hence the two names. He's always been Man Ray to us, though. Finally, we'd be psyched to do a cartoon based on our comics, but unfortunately, legal problems prevent us from doing so. There was also an issue where Man Ray actually refers to himself as Ray Filet in the comic. Man Ray and Ray Filet are indeed the same character. I'm not going to swap too many hands around, but I do want him to hold his harpoon gun. So let's see. Those hands are tight. Gosh, that, that is a very tight hand. Heat these guys up. <laughs> This pop is trigger finger in. Those those hands are really stuck. Let's see how well he holds his harpoon. 
holds his harpoon very well. Let's bring in the vintage Ray Filet action figure and his sidekick fish stick. Fish stick is obviously inspired of Bubba here. They are quite different in some fashions, but it's obviously a small little fish man. Of course, he doesn't have a big backpack full of dynamite. If you go back to this cover, you can obviously see the great inspiration that this figure had on the cover. So Man Ray predates the toy of Ray Filet. And not even a year apart from each other, we have Super 7's Ray Filet action figure from their Playmates style line. And the scale is like right on par with each other. They're, they're practically the same height. It's a wonderful expression of the same character in different iterations. Both of these figures are amazing, by the way. There are certain characters that I'm just thrilled to have multiples of in different formats. And Man Ray and Ray Filet are definitely two of the same. And here is his fish stick, which is insanely massive compared to the vintage one. And he even towers greatly over Bubba here. Uh, I'm going to have to say definitely a fish stick fan. I prefer a fish stick over this guy. I'm really happy with this figure. Uh, the price point is decent. It's about 25% cheaper than, say, the Super 7's Ray Filet. And he doesn't have quite as many accessories as, say, Super 7's Ray Filet had. But there's definitely a similar level of quality here between the two. So had there not been any trademark issues, our vintage Ray Filet would have been named Man Ray from the start. If anyone's ever wondered what the deal with that is, there you go. I hope I answered those questions. I'm fortunate that I have these comics from when I was a kid. I was able to look through them and do some research. I'm really liking this Archie line. I look forward to seeing what else they release. They have since released Jaguar and Dreadmon in this line so far. Of course, Slash was the first figure for the Archie line, and he looks wonderful. I love this guy, and they, they fit in pretty good together. <laughs> So I don't know if I'll be getting Jaguar or Dreadmon. I wasn't particularly a fan of either of those character designs. But uh, I am looking forward to seeing what else they have. Because I, if you've never read these Archie Turtle comics, they are just completely insane. The characters are insane. The character designs are insane. I mean, there are talking trees. There are flying cow heads. I mean, it's just all over the place with the character design and I actually love some of the interpretations of the vintage characters. I love these little bug guys. I, I want to see so many. There's so many good things they could get from these comic books. It's just all about is there a demand for it. I believe the first four figures in this set will give NECA clear indication of whether there is a demand for more Archie style characters. I think the characters they picked to start with are very strong. And really, the Mighty Mutanimals are probably the biggest draw from the Archie comics. But there are so many other tertiary characters and background characters that could really fit in. I do want, specifically, the four wrestling turtles. I want the turtles in their wrestling gear. They are just really fun. I'm very nostalgic about these guys. I read through this book, and I had a couple other books with these styles. So I would really like to see them do a little box set of the Wrestling Turtles. This has been an unboxing, review, comparison, etc. history lesson of Man Ray slash Ray Filet from NECA's TMNT Adventures Archie line. And I am UR Supreme Toys. Thank you so much for watching.